We're moving back to my parents' house next month. When my husband, Ben, made this announcement to his sister-in-law, Holly, she seemed ecstatic. Her reaction took both Ben and me by surprise. On the day of the move, I received a barrage of phone calls once I finished unpacking. Your new address is... Holly had made a mistake without hearing out the story and was subsequently plunged into despair. My name is Jane, 35 years old. Just a regular office worker. I live with my husband Ben and our child who is in the fourth grade. We both work to support our life and have a great relationship as a family. Our life was smooth sailing. One day, Holly came to visit. At first, she had politely said that she just came over to hang out so we warmly welcomed her. However, she started coming over every few days without a call, and her attitude gradually became more arrogant. Holly knew I finished my work on time. She'd time her visits accordingly, making herself comfortable and helping herself to food and drink. At her worst, she even ate the kids' snacks. I tried advising Holly about her actions, but she wouldn't listen. Instead, she'd become outraged and impossible to handle. Recently, she had been coming over every day. Ben and I were constantly worrying about how we could stop her from visiting. Hey, you didn't buy anything today? Even though you knew I was coming, I could almost hear myself sigh in response to her. I almost let out a sigh at her acting so. I didn't buy anything. If you want something to eat, please buy it yourself. As soon as I spoke these firm words, Holly began to yell at a deafening pitch. Don't mess with me. I'm a guest. You should treat me. Besides, this is your house, isn't it? It's common sense for you to pay for everything. She would shout these words at the top of her lungs, thinking that becoming aggressive will get her way. She was an incredibly selfish and troublesome person. Holly, we didn't receive any call about you coming. Isn't it common sense to call before coming if you want to be treated? At this, Holly quivered her shoulders and spilled the tea she was holding. How dare you, you're my sister-in-law. Are you entitled to behave this way? I'll spread bad rumors about you to all our relatives. Despite being the one causing the inconvenience, she could still muster such audacity. I know Holly wasn't like this before. The first time I went to my in-law's house to say hello, she was living there with her husband, Ken. When I was nervously greeting them, they both chatted with me in a friendly manner. Thanks to them, I could relax and talk, got warmly welcomed by my in-laws, and successfully married Ben. But when I met her after a long time, she was a different person. Even when I asked her if something happened at her in-laws, Holly refused to answer. At first, I thought I could support her, but as she started visiting us daily and behaving without restraint, I became fed up. Gradually, I started behaving coldly towards her, which made her actions even more extreme. I want to drink. Go buy it. Now. Holly commanded me, who was cooking, to go outside as if she was chasing me out. My bag, which was in the living room, was thrown outside. Although I was agitated and wanted to decline while picking up my bag, Holly blocked the door and wouldn't let me in until I bought what she asked for. Please, stop it. My husband is going to be home soon. Our kid will be coming back from his friend's house soon. I don't care. If you stop complaining and go right now, you should be back in time. Holly said that, standing in the doorway like a gatekeeper, determined not to let me into the house. I gave up arguing, as it would just waste time, and reluctantly went to the nearby supermarket to buy alcohol as Holly demanded. When I returned home, as expected, my kids were back, and my sister-in-law, Holly, was arrogantly making my child clean up the tea she had just spilled. I hastily rushed to my child and glared at Holly. Please never do this again. It's your spilled tea, right? Clean up after yourself. When I assertively said this, Holly started drinking the wine she had grabbed from me and said, It's your fault for being so slow. I instructed my child to take their stuff to their room and hurriedly finished the rest of the cleaning. 
As I was cooking, I was getting more and more annoyed, wondering if there was a way to stop Holly's outrageous behavior. I decided to consult with my husband, Ben, about Holly. He was as angry as I was about what Holly had done to our child. He said he would call his brother right away, but. A few minutes later, Ben came back frowning. When I asked him what had happened, he looked at his cell phone with a puzzled expression. I want to contact my brother, but for some reason, the call isn't going through. Upon hearing this, I tilted my head in confusion. We wondered what might be happening on their end and discussed visiting my in-laws, but neither of us could find a convenient date due to work. Although we were anxious, we decided to visit my in-laws on a day that suited us next month and ended the discussion. The next day, I told Holly that we were going to my in-laws' house. But, she didn't give us any details, and for some reason, she vehemently objected to us going to my in-laws' house. Don't come! I absolutely won't forgive you if you just come! As Holly yelled, we became even more confused. Why didn't she want us to go to my in-laws' house? As I was thinking about all this, I had more bad news the next day. My mom called me to tell me that my dad had been injured. Your father fell down the stairs. It's not serious, but he was told that he needs caregiving. My mother sighed, looking distraught. I was worried and offered to go home right away, but my mother insisted. Don't worry about it. You have children, right? Put them first before us. With that, she hung up. My parents are both over 65 years old. Even though they're retired, they work in senior jobs to make a living. If my father is injured and needs caregiving, my mother will have to support him while working. Of course, they won't be able to live as they used to. I wondered if there was anything I could do for them. I ended the day's work with a heavy heart and went home. That evening, Holly came to our house as usual after the children came back from school. I'm hungry, isn't dinner ready yet? She was planning to have dinner at our place as it was a normal thing to do. I looked at Holly with a bitter expression. I wanted to discuss my parents with Ben that night, but it would be difficult to do so with Holly there. Could you please pass on dinner tonight? Instead, I bought a cake. When I offered the cake to Holly, she frowned and glared at me. What do you mean? You expect me to fill up on cake? That's ridiculous. We have our circumstances too. I'm sorry, but could you eat this and go home? I said so, but Holly reluctantly looked at the cake. I tried saying, if you don't want it, you don't have to eat it. But she ignored my words and ate too instead and went back home. After that, I consulted with Ben, who had returned home. He suggested that we should at least send money to my parents for their living expenses, but we can't afford to support my parents' lifestyle every month. Ben said he would do more overtime, but I didn't want him to do that either. At that moment, we came up with a great idea. A good way to solve both the problem with my brother's wife and my parents' situation. Ben agreed with me, and we immediately started preparing. I called my parents while my husband, Ben, started packing our belongings. Then, he made a call to Holly on her cell. We're moving back to my parents' place next month. We won't be here when you visit. Holly seemed delighted at Ben's declaration. Well, I should start preparing, too. She remarked, seemingly not paying much attention to the conversation, and hung up the phone. We were left wondering what she needed to prepare for. Well, never mind. We concluded so and ended the conversation. On the day of moving, we arrived at my parents' home and started unpacking. Suddenly, we noticed a barrage of calls from Holly. I hurriedly answered the phone to find Holly sounding hysterical. After waiting for her to calm down, I asked what had happened, to which she replied in shock. Your new place is. I was confused and replied. Huh? It's my parents' home. I said we were moving to our parents' house, right? Holly's gasp could be heard over the phone. Parents' home. Ben mentioned it, so I assumed you were moving here. Surprised, I immediately asked Ben, who was nearby playing with our child. Ben, seemingly oblivious, replied, 
I clearly said our parents' home. Dot. I clearly said our parents' home. Dot. Did you explain it was my parents' home? I was cut off before I could explain. Anyway, it's not really a big deal, right? You also said, well, never mind. Dot. That's when I first realized there had been a huge misunderstanding. I'm sorry, Holly. We didn't move to your parents' home. We've already finished moving. Ben tried to explain, but you hung up. As I explained, Holly started protesting angrily. I didn't know. Explain properly. I assumed you were coming here. My plans are all messed up. What are you going to do about this? And so, Holly started to berate me. When I asked her about her plans, Holly revealed something astonishing. I assumed you'd handle all the tedious house chores when you moved in with us. I was left speechless at her words. Ignoring Holly's derisive attitude, I explained why we chose to move. We were having a hard time with your frequent visits, Holly. Around the same time, my mom told me that my dad got injured and needed care. When I discussed this with Ben, he suggested we move to my parents' home as it would keep you away and we could help my mom. Upon hearing this, Holly could only say, Huh? In a threatening tone. My parents' home is conveniently located near our child's school. And it was also close to our workplaces, so the move went smoothly. It was like killing two birds with one stone. Although we had intended to explain this to Holly, she had hastily ended the call so we didn't feel it was our fault. Move here right now, Holly demanded, raising her voice. But I flatly refused. While I didn't hate the idea of living with Holly's family, I couldn't stand the thought of being exploited. Besides, my parents are having a hard time right now. Even after explaining this, Holly wouldn't accept it. So, you won't listen to me? Suddenly, we heard Ben's brother's voice. Holly gasped and moved away from the phone. Is everything okay, Holly? As I asked this, Holly pleaded in a frantic voice. Please, just come here now. What do you mean? Just hurry. I wonder what on earth my sister-in-law is so anxious about. Overwhelmed by Holly's words, I was at a loss for words and then she abruptly ended the call. After ending the call, I told my husband Ben about what my sister-in-law had said and he let out a grunt. We need to check it out, I guess. He said, offering to drive. In the midst of just having moved and being busy with various things, I informed my parents that we were going to my in-laws. Fortunately, both of my parents were at home, so they agreed to take care of the kids. Thanks to them, Ben and I could head to my in-laws together. Upon arriving at my in-laws, I immediately walked into the living room. There, I found Holly with a gloomy face and my mother-in-law and brother-in-law with angry expressions. As soon as they noticed us, they offered us tea and explained the situation. Actually, Holly ran away from home after we blamed her for her extravagant spending. We tried to contact her many times, but we couldn't get through. It's been tough, said my brother-in-law, glaring at Holly. I was shocked and opened my eyes wide upon hearing this. I hadn't even thought that Holly had run away from home. Ben was similarly stunned, looking at Holly in disbelief. Holly even used my savings. I called her several times to get my money back, but I couldn't reach her at all. Then, she suddenly came back home today. I was surprised when I heard that you were moving in, but it seems that was a misunderstanding. Taken aback, I instinctively shook my head. Then Holly, who had been silent so far, raised her voice in protest. First of all, it's your fault, mother-in-law, for meddling in my affairs. I spent the money to relieve the stress from you. It's not a big deal. Holly slammed her fist on the table with her face flushed. However, neither my mother-in-law nor brother-in-law backed down. Enough with your excuses. You quit your job out of the blue and decided to be a stay-at-home wife, but you didn't do any housework or cooking, did you? You dumped all the troublesome tasks on us. How can you be stressed out? That's right. 
You used all the living expenses that mom and I earned on your designer bags. This is unacceptable. Something's wrong with you. Both my mother-in-law and brother-in-law raised their voices in anger with their faces flushed. Seeing their attitude, Holly, showing no remorse, looked away, not taking the situation seriously. We had no idea that things were like this at my in-laws. At this, my brother-in-law's voice grew louder. Enough is enough. It seems like you're also causing trouble for my younger brother, aren't you? If you're so dissatisfied, let's just get divorced. Don't ever interfere with us again. When my brother-in-law said that, Holly's face suddenly turned pale and she started to panic. Wait, wait. Why does it have to come to that? I was just trying to take care of you too. Hearing Holly's excuse, Ben and I sighed. It was us who took care of you. You came over every day ate and drank whatever you wanted from our home, even had dinner, without paying for the groceries or lifting a finger to help me. When I said that, my brother-in-law glared at Holly with a sharp look. Well, that's because it's your house. I'm a guest, so why do I need to pay money? Holly spoke so selfishly that we were speechless. My brother-in-law, determined not to back down, pulled out divorce papers from the shelf. I've been struggling with this. Holly, I can't put up with you anymore. Sign these papers right now and leave. Don't ever come near this house or my younger brothers again. At my brother-in-law's intense spirit, Holly was taken aback. Also, you have to repay mom's savings in full, okay? Let's discuss it properly through a lawyer. Upon hearing that, Holly was visibly shocked her face turning pale. I wonder how much money she used. From her reaction, it seemed to be a considerable amount. I don't have that kind of money. Jane, you and Ben are both working, right? You should have some spare. Holly, flustered, turned to me for help. I shook my head side to side, looking at her. We just can't afford it. We have our parents' healthcare expenses, our kids' support payments, and our own living costs. You're going to have to figure this out yourself. At my words, Holly finally accepted and gave up. After that, as per her brother-in-law's declaration, Holly was required to fully repay her mother-in-law's money. She hired a lawyer and got it recorded in official documents, so there would be no escaping it. My husband and I were told about this by her brother-in-law and he apologized again, saying, I'm sorry for involving you in this. We felt relieved as our lingering worries had been resolved. By the way, it seems like all the food and drink Holly had in our house was also added to the mother-in-law's claim. Since there's no detailed documentation or evidence, full repayment might not be possible, but he said some of it might be returned. My husband and I thanked the brother-in-law. Apparently, she had borrowed money to cover her expenses when she had run away, and now she's living on the edge due to that debt as well. Meanwhile, I'm spending my time helping my mom at my parents' home. I don't have to worry about Holly anymore, and most of my stress is gone. From now on, I'm determined to work hard to protect my beloved parents and family. Come see the baby with him. You must be frustrated being single. With a triumphant smile, my best friend Christina said. It was the same expression she had two years ago. Christina and I, who were colleagues at the company, were thought to be best friends by those around us. In fact, I thought so too. But to Christina, I was just someone to be used. Christina stole Daniel, my fiancé, and left the company boasting about it. Left behind, I quietly thought to myself, I won't forgive Christina or Daniel, who abandoned me. The moment for revenge seems to have finally arrived. I narrowed my eyes and stared at Christina. My name is Kimberly, 27 years old. Having graduated from a decent university, I was able to get a job at a fairly large company. There, I fell in love with Daniel and got engaged after a year and a half of dating. Daniel was older than me and was good at his job. 
He was popular among the women in the office, and I was filled with pride back then. But what was strongest wasn't a sense of superiority, but the happiness of being able to marry Daniel. My best friend Christina also congratulated me. At that time. Congratulations on your engagement, Kimberly. Thank you. I was so happy because I was crazy about Daniel. Daniel also smiled at Christina. Having friends to celebrate with, Kimberly, you have a talent for being likable. Not at all. I shook my head, not entirely displeased. That day, the three of us, Daniel, Christina, and I, who had finished work, were at my apartment. Christina and I were sitting across from each other at the table, so I could see her expression well. Christina seemed genuinely happy for me. How did Kimberly and Daniel end up together? I was the one who approached him. I even aggressively asked him out on dates. We went to various places for lunch and dinner together. It's fun to be together, and Kimberly is good at cooking too. Daniel was youthful in appearance and had a toned body. That alone made him a fiancé to boast about. Speaking of which, Kimberly, you suddenly started going to cooking classes. Oh no, don't say that. I was flustered. Christina was innocent, so she probably didn't mean any harm. But for me, it felt like my secret had been exposed. As I panicked, Daniel laughed. You went that far for me? I'm happy. Because I love Daniel. I blushed and looked down. Overwhelmed by the awkwardness, I stood up from my chair and fled to the kitchen. I'll get some drinks. Yeah, please do. Daniel waved his hand at me. I retreated into the kitchen and sighed. I was surprised. Christina has moments like that from time to time. She would tell others inconvenient things about someone with a smile. It was my fault for letting my guard down around her. With that thought, I opened the fridge. At that moment, laughter echoed. It was Daniel and Christina's. Really? Is that true? Yes, it is. Kimberly would bring her failed cooking attempts in a lunchbox to work every day. I tasted it once, and it was awful. But it was delicious when Daniel ate it, right? Of course. The presentation was beautiful too. You worked hard, Kimberly. Christina laughed as if she was impressed. I hurried back to them with a beer in hand. Christina, let's drop that topic, please. We're engaged after all, I thought this conversation was already had. Christina said, her smile fading from her face. As she pouted like a child. Look, Daniel, Kimberly is being tough on me. Christina. Just kidding. Saying that, Christina smiled again. I felt uneasy about Christina's attitude, as she never apologized until the end. Daniel's demeanor gradually became more sullen. I have a night shift today, so we can't meet. He said, and stopped coming to my apartment. At first, I thought it was inevitable because of work. But one day, while talking to Daniel's colleague, I learned a shocking truth. Daniel seems busy these days, doesn't he? Daniel? No, our department is slow right now, so there's no overtime. What? I was stunned. When I confronted Daniel on his way home, he looked awkwardly down. What's the meaning of lying? Sorry. Kimberly, wait. Christina had been listening in from some point and was standing there. She stood not by me, but by Daniel and took his arm. I was the one holding him back. I started going to cooking classes recently, inspired by Kimberly, and I had Daniel taste test and give me advice. Wait a minute. I couldn't comprehend what Christina was saying. Fueled by anger, I glared at Christina. Why are you copying me? And Daniel is my fiancé. It's strange to meet secretly, isn't it? 
there's nothing strange about it. Christina suddenly twisted her mouth. It was a creepy smile. I didn't know Christina could make such a face. It's not strange. If Kimberly had a chance, I think I have the right to try under the same conditions. Christina snuggled up to Daniel and smiled. He ended up liking me more than you. What? I looked at Daniel in disbelief. What was Christina talking about? It was a bad joke. Daniel, you're tired. You don't have to stick around Christina anymore. Sorry, Kimberly. Daniel whispered an apology. Before I could say anything more, he hugged Christina. Wait. I've always liked Christina. But you were always there, honestly getting in the way. But since you was so devoted, I thought about marrying you instead. What is that supposed to mean? Sorry, Kimberly. But that's how it is. Christina said with a triumphant look while still in Daniel's embrace. Thanks for your hard work until now. From now on, I, who truly love Daniel, will support him. Wait. That's not. I felt darkness closing in around me. Despair crept up from my feet. They quickly left. The next day, Daniel broke off our engagement and announced his new engagement with Christina at work. Two years have passed since then. The whispers about Daniel disappeared with his promotion. I've continued to work, bearing both sympathy and ridicule from my colleagues, until today. Until I met that person. Huh? Isn't that Kimberly? Christina. I heard a voice I didn't want to hear. Looking across the street, she was walking towards me. Why did I have to run into her on a weekend afternoon? She was draped in branded bags and accessories. Given Daniel's current position, such luxury wasn't impossible. Kimberly, are you still living in that apartment? What do you want to know for? Just wondering. I thought I might visit again. Or maybe you could come to my place. Hey, that would be better, wouldn't it? She was presumptuous. I frowned and was about to leave. When Christina called out from behind. Come see the baby with him. You must be frustrated being single. Christina. I sighed and stopped. When I turned around, Christina was smiling. The triumphant look on his face was the same as it was two years ago. Fine. When should I come? The sooner, the better. How about tonight? You must be free, right? I'm not free, but I'll come anyway. Good. Christina smiled, her face contorting as if in a grimace. That night, I drove according to the map I received. Daniel and Christina's house came into view. It was a grand and tasteless house, just like Christina. I'm here, Christina. I've been waiting, Kimberly. How does it feel, the heir of a married couple? It must be hard for single Kimberly, but bear with it. Don't worry about me. I said, cutting off Christina's chatter. Then, let me introduce my family. Christina's face froze in astonishment. Wait, isn't Kimberly single? I might not be wearing a ring, but... I do wish she'd wear one, though. Matthew, standing beside me, chimed in. Matthew is my husband. Though he's been divorced, he values our marriage all the more for it. Christina, what are you doing? Oh, Daniel. Long time no see. I casually waved and greeted him. Daniel was taken aback. First by my appearance, and then, a moment later, by Matthew's presence. The president? What? Hearing Daniel's voice, Christina also became flustered. Ignoring them both, Matthew laughed. Nice to meet you. I'm Matthew, Kimberly's husband. And this is our daughter, Brittany. Pleased to meet you. 
Brittany greeted them. She's turning nine this year. Despite her age, she's composed and mature. What do you think of my family, Christina? What do you mean, what? Why? Christina screamed, her face turning red. Why is Kimberly married to the president of the company? Hearing Christina's outcry, I remembered the day. I met Matthew in the company's break room. When I was feeling down and tired of the bad-mouthing alone, Matthew approached me. What's wrong? It's nothing. I looked up at Matthew with caution. Being tall, I had to look up to see his face. But that didn't matter to me at that time. I think I had reached a state where I expected nothing from anyone else. So, I didn't mind telling Matthew about Christina. After all, it was already well known within the company. They're terrible. Matthew frowned as he said that. It's my fault for not being appealing. That's what everyone says. No, it's not your fault. The fault lies with those two. It was the first time anyone had said that to me. So, I was happy and called Matthew my savior. Savior? Yes. You've made me feel so much better. So, Matthew, you're my savior. I said that and was about to leave. When Matthew, with a solemn look, spoke to me. If I'm your savior, then let me be the one to rescue you. That's how I started dating Matthew, and at the same time, the bad-mouthing about me faded away. I didn't understand why at the time. I only found out Matthew was the president after he proposed to me. No wonder the bad-mouthing stopped. After all, I was dating the president. Why didn't you tell me? It was hard to bring up. But my desire to be with Kimberly is genuine. Seeing Matthew smile sheepishly, I couldn't bring myself to say anything more. By that time, I had also gotten to know Brittany. Brittany had started calling me mom. And so, I became Matthew's wife. Remembering that, I couldn't help but give a wry smile. Who would have thought Matthew was the president? But now, I'm happy. Yes, I'm sure you are. Christina's voice sounded like she was holding back anger. Well, you are the president's wife. It's not about that. Matthew is kind and thoughtful, and Brittany is honest and adorable. I'm happy because I got to become a family with them. So, you came here to show off. That's in poor taste, Kimberly. I was appalled by Daniel's misplaced remark. I didn't come here on my own, Christina was the one who insisted. You know she won't take no for an answer. I just went along with it. Is that true, Christina? Well... Christina's face looked like she was about to cry. To Christina and Daniel, who were feeling down, Matthew said cheerfully. Promoting Daniel was a way of thanking him for being kind to Kimberly in the past. Yes. But that ends today. From now on, I'll be the one make her happy. Daniel, you're going back to being a regular employee. What? Daniel let out a scream. Naturally. He must have bought a house based on his current income. But losing his position now would mean a significant drop in income. You can't be serious. Christina shouted. Just because you're the president doesn't make this right. We have a baby to think about. You two both can work, that should be enough to get by. I stated the obvious. Though, you might have to say goodbye to those branded goods. Kimberly, you're the worst. Christina was wailing. Daniel started to placate her as if he had resigned himself to his fate. I turned to Brittany with a smile. Brittany, would you go back to the car? This isn't something I want you to see. Okay. Brittany nodded and headed back to the car. Shall we head back too? Yes, let's. I started walking away with Matthew. Christina's crying could still be heard. 
The news about Daniel being demoted to a regular employee became a topic of gossip within the company. It's not like Daniel was exceptionally talented. I want to place someone more competent in Daniel's position. Matthew said this and then looked at me. What do you think? Kimberly, would you like to give it a try? Me? No way. Really? But I believe you're diligent, and I trust you'll meet my expectations. Thank you, Matthew. I wanted to meet Matthew's expectations, despite my apprehensions. So I accepted the position. My world changed overnight. Colleagues who used to badmouth me were now anxious to see how I'd react. Please take care of this. All this work, by myself? Daniel let out a cry at my instructions. But he got to work even before I could say anything more. Daniel was desperate to get promoted again. Though Matthew said there was little hope for that. Why has it come to this? Focus on your work instead of complaining. Christina had also returned to work. Christina seemed to be financially cornered. The colleague's response to her was cold. Everyone was aware of the friction between Daniel and me, and it was clear that I was the victor in this battle. There was no longer anyone in the company who dared to oppose me. One day, during a break, Christina approached me. Usually eating lunch alone, she spoke awkwardly. Kimberly, please. Forgive us. We can't take it anymore. Daniel's salary has decreased, and we've had to give up our house and everything. There's nothing to forgive. I sighed in exasperation. Christina looked plain, almost like a different person. Though she wore makeup, it couldn't hide her pallor. Her hair was unkempt, showing a lack of care. This was Matthew's decision. I was promoted for my work, and Daniel returned to his original position. That's all there is to it. But you have the title of being the president's wife. Christina raised her voice. I shrugged in response. With Matthew's income, I don't need to work. But I continue because I find fulfillment in my job. Don't act so high and mighty. Calm down, Christina. I looked around. Christina followed my gaze. Other employees were watching us from a distance. She seemed to shrink, realizing that causing a scene would only worsen her situation. On another day, Daniel also approached me. He too pleaded for his position to be reinstated. Don't you think it's terrible to be given menial tasks by people who were once your subordinates? They seem to enjoy piling work on me. That's tough. I offered a sympathetic response, though it felt detached. I once had feelings for Daniel. We were engaged once. It was undeniable that some residual feelings stirred within me. But that was all there was to it. Now, I am Matthew's wife. I love him, and I think of Brittany as my own daughter. There was no love left for Daniel. Keep up the good work. You even have a child with Christina. Christina always cuts corners with meals. I feel sorry for the kid. I regret it. I should have married Kimberly instead. If only you had what? I looked at Daniel with a chilly gaze. I had thought he was a kind man. But in reality, he was just a coward, always looking out for himself. Caught up in convenient fantasies, utterly hopeless. I'm glad I didn't marry Daniel. Knowing his true nature now gives me peace of mind. What? I left a bewildered Daniel behind and returned to my work. I had my own struggles too. The workload was incomparable to before, and the pressure of not making mistakes was immense. Yet, I also felt a sense of fulfillment. I felt like I had finally found my place in the company. Christina and Daniel came to me almost in turns. Both of them became increasingly haggard, and it was distressing to watch. Please! 
What happened two years ago was a mistake. Forgive us. Speak to the president. You know, convince him that it's a waste to keep me as a regular employee. I should aim for a higher position. That's for Matthew to decide. I had stopped engaging with them. They both talked about nothing but money. And recently, it seemed their marriage was also on the rocks. I began to notice them arguing from time to time. Then, Daniel came out with something astonishing. I'm willing to leave Christina. No, I will leave her. So, let's get back together. Don't be ridiculous. My voice contained a hint of irritation. I love Matthew and Brittany. It's over between us, Daniel. That can't be true. Don't you still think of me, somewhere deep in your heart? He was again saying things that suited him best. I had no words to return. It seemed pointless to speak. Then Christina appeared. She must have been eavesdropping on our conversation and confronted Daniel with a raised voice. What are you saying, Daniel? Christina doesn't even take care of the child properly and does nothing but complain every day. I didn't know she was like that. The two of them started arguing. I quietly left the scene. Soon after, it seemed they got divorced. I say seemed because they're no longer at this company, so I only know through rumors. There's no hope for promotion here anymore. I'm sick of my colleagues. With those bitter words, Daniel left the company. Christina also left around the same time. Later, she appeared several times in front of the company, begging me to lend her money, but I didn't entertain her requests. Christina, you need to manage on your own. Don't be like that. As the president's wife, you must have more money than you need. Don't talk like that. I frowned. Matthew's assets exist as a result of his hard work. It's unfair to talk as if the money just appeared out of nowhere. But it seemed my words didn't reach Christina. You're heartless. You're no best friend of mine. That was the last line I heard from Christina the last time we met. I couldn't help but scoff. Best friends. The feeling was mutual. The moment you took Daniel from me, we ceased to be best friends. Maybe we were never truly friends to begin with. I muttered to myself, alone. I continued to work at the company. However, after finding out I was pregnant, Matthew and I decided that I would leave the company. Financially, we had no worries. I could also ensure more time with Brittany. Let's spend lots of time talking together, Brittany. Yeah. I'm also excited about the baby. Brittany smiled as she gently touched my growing belly. Matthew watched us with a fond smile. Brittany has a little brother. His name is Andrew. Andrew, Andrew. She adored and took great care of Andrew. Despite her maturity, Brittany had felt lonely with both parents working. She became more affectionate towards me, and I grew even fonder of her. Mom, Andrew smiled. Do you think he knows I'm his big sister? He might. I stroked Brittany's head, who was beaming with pride. Matthew, busy with work, often came home late. Concerned about the limited time to talk with the kids. How about we go out this weekend? Where to? Anywhere is fine. Whether it's a barbecue or an amusement park. If our time to talk with Brittany is limited, we should make our time together as rich as possible. I said. Matthew's eyes lit up as he took my hand. Kimberly, you're a genius. Not really. But more importantly, shall we go check on the kids sleeping? With my suggestion, Matthew nodded. Hand in hand, we headed to the children's room. Brittany was sleeping. She was wrapped in her bed, breathing peacefully in her sleep. She's grown so much. He murmured, touching Brittany's cheek gently. She smiled as if tickled. 
but showed no signs of waking. Surely, she would have sweet dreams tonight. We then moved to our bedroom. In the crib beside us, Andrew was sleeping. His hair was starting to grow in. And his features resembled Matthew's more than mine. Yet, Matthew said, Andrew looks like you. He said with a smile. But he has your mouth, Matthew, don't you think? Really? I think the area around his eyes is just like Kimberly's. We exchanged these gentle words and laughed together. Life had its hardships and unpleasant moments, but I was undeniably happy now.